Four Midwest Guys presents The Night's Watch, a Game of Thrones podcast. Night gathers and now my watch begins. I am the sword in the darkness. I am the watcher on the walls. I am the shield that guards the realm of men. We watch, we listen, and we remember. The past is already written, the ink is dry. I thought he was the man to lead us through the long night. I'll show them what Lannisters are. What we do to our enemies. How do you know this? That's what I do. I drink and I know things. I believe men of talent have a part to play in the war to come. I will never set a plan. You could help another client to those steps and take that seat. I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. They have no idea what's going to happen. The real war is between the living and the dead. And make no mistake, the dead are coming. Hello everybody and welcome back to 4 Midwest Guys Presents The Night's Watch, a Game of Thrones podcast. Tonight we'll be reviewing Season 6, Episode 7, The Broken Man. With me today is Stephanie, who's got a very weak voice. Hi everybody! We'll try to limit your questions to you tonight. Thank you. <laughs> and her husband, Johnny Z. See, look at the fun we're having now. <laughs> I think that is a Tyrion question. Is that it fun? is. It is actually a Tyrion question. There we go. It's very My random. My brother Aaron just... is back. Hey, how's it going, man? What's going on? And Brian B. Yeah, it's Brian B. Brian, Brian A. a. <laughs> What's up, man? Brian B. Oh, oh, Brian B. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. I was just waiting in line somewhere. <laughs> So we have a full crew for Game of Thrones today, and we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. So first scene, where you, you see a group of people, looks like they're building a church. And we don't even get like our favorite like opening credit scene either. Like It doesn't like start right with our no, like, it doesn't. swooping map. Yeah, it's right before, it's even before the swooping map, that's a good point. So they're building this, this church and whatever. And it turns out it looks like he's wearing the, the scepter. He's a like he's, he's uh, got like the seven points. The seven points. So he's a seven points guy, priest, whatever you want to call him. I don't know. Uh, what, what's it called? A sept? I'm sorry. It's a scepter. Scepter. Yeah, yeah. you're good. Okay. It's like a scepter symbol. So it's just, it's like a star I'm with sorry, dude. It was scepter. just it's it was funny. No, no, it was just funny. Well, speak up. Say something, woman. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to be cruel. We are. <laughs> All right, so lo and behold, gonna though, be? he has this big group of people with him. His followers are building this, this, I guess, church. They're starting to, to get the framework up. Yeah, like a church or, or a village or something. Yeah, right? something. Yeah, it something. It looks like, like a missionary almost. Yeah, it looks like they're building a church because it looks like it's got a little steeple on it. So, uh, and lo and behold, with them is the Hound. He has survived. Surprise. Spoiler alert. Surprise. Arya's list is now incom- even more incomplete. <laughs> Somehow, he survived. Somehow, he was this uh, sept, found him, said bugs were calling on him. He was just going to give him a proper burial, and all of a sudden, he breathed. Okay. Um, and then he nursed him back to health. Well, I yeah. guess this is the season for bringing characters back from the dead on him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Normally, up to this point, if they die... Usually They're dead. dead. Usually they chop off their head, though. Yeah. So. Yeah. But this season seems to be the exception for that. Yeah. So well, because, like, a true zombie, th- you know, in, like, true zombie form, the only way to truly kill something is to, like, take off their head. Well, yeah. the, the scepter said, you know, you had you had bugs calling on you, you know, you breathe, you're, you're still alive, you know, you had bones sticking out of you, and no, you were still no, alive. No, and you were dead again? Yeah. You coughed? Yeah. It was... Really, you're on the brink of death for like weeks. Like I was gonna give you a day or two, and now I'm still alive. Okay. And, and the hound is almost like Jon Snow too, though. He's kind of like I don't understand why the gods haven't punished me for all that I've done. Why am I still alive? Mm-hmm. Why am I still here? Well, the scepter has a pretty decent response to that. It's like they probably are. And they already they already <laughs> punished you. Yeah. Haven't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So, um, kind of interesting. I was completely shocked. I did not see this one coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I did not. Yeah. Well, he's he's decent decent choice. And let's not forget that uh, who's actually playing uh, this scepter is Ian McShane of uh, Deadwood fame. So he, he's back on another HBO show again. Yay! <laughs> Although it did very short. We'll get to that later, though. Oh. <laughs> Spoilers, he died. <laughs> 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 
and I made one mistake. I mean, the second he started talking, I mean, it actually... It was the first time I actually heard somebody of faith on the show actually sound like somebody you would want to be your pastor or someone you'd want to be in charge of your church. Yeah, like he, he actually like a complete cut. Yeah, he didn't, and he wasn't. He didn't have like any ulterior motives. He was just like trying to just be a good person and live his life. And then I was like, "Oh, I love this guy!" And then I was like, "Damn it!" Because yeah, he was real grounded. Yeah, exactly. Well, he used to be a soldier. Who the hell am I? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and and it was Peter pretty cool. Goes through that um, scene where he's talking about like his regrets from the wars. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Come no, out. honey, you're oh, fine. No. You're fine. Was it? <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> All I was gonna say was I thought it was pretty cool when the hound was talking to him and because he had saw the necklace around his neck and he's like, "So are you like the Lord of Light or who's your God?" He goes, "Or well, they all a God?" He's like, "Lord, he's of, like, Light. Lord of Light, the seven, seven king, king. the old gods, new gods." A, like, he named them all, and he's all like, the "They're all the same, aren't they?" <laughs> I was like, like, oh, oh my god, I love this guy. Hey, pretty much, I'm praying to whoever's listening. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so the brothers, so this group, these three guys show up. Apparently they're the brothers without banners. And uh, they obviously don't follow the the, uh, the, the seven points. Or Brotherhood whatever. without banners. What is it? Brotherhood, Brotherhood without banners. Is that what I, I thought I said that? I'm sorry. So yeah, the brother. No, uh, so the three guys are the brother. The part of the brotherhood without banners. They don't follow this particular religion, and basically there's a confrontation. They basically yeah they show up and they're like, well, what do you have? Oh, we have nothing. It's like, well, I see you have food. I see you have uh, stuff for a fire. I see you have axes. He's like, you have a lot of stuff you can give us. Mm. But then they leave with nothing that day. Well, but, and, and to the Seps' credit, he actually talks them down a little bit. Yeah, he does. And he tries to do, and he does it peacefully. I mean, but yeah. the Hound, being a man of the of the world and knowing the way the world works and saying, hey, I haven't completely forgotten how this place, how this world works, he knows that they're going to come back. But, the, you know, the guys like, or the Scepter is like, no, no, I just, I've. And like you said, that was that scene we got where he comes and he's gone back from war. I'm exhausted. I don't want to fight anymore. <sighs> yeah. yeah but it, it, go ahead, Aaron. Talk. Oh, it kind of gives reinforces the concept of Game of Thrones. Like this is the one of the few people who's really trying to just be peaceful and you know just live his life and not mess with anyone else's <laughs> bullshit. And his you know reward for trying to give peace a chance is death. <laughs> is this what I'm supposed to be? Yeah, and, and even they, the, when they leave, they go, well, the night is full of terror. Mm. Yeah, there's that yeah. kind of little we'll character. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. And the hound comes up to Hope him. Hope you make it through the night. Right, that's when the hound comes up and says, well, they follow the right god, they're going to kill you, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And the sep t- talks him down, or talks yeah. him out of leaving, basically. Well, and behold, you know, the hound goes out to the forest, cuts some wood, comes back, and... Yeah, yeah, he, he, and yeah, yeah. he hears everything, so he stops what he's doing. Go back. Well, right. I don't know if it's even that he hears things or yeah. he just doesn't notice sound. Well, because well, they're, well, they're, well, you hear a woman. Yeah, you hear a woman screaming. Yeah, I would say you hear oh, screaming. You? Yeah, yeah okay. you do hear a scream, and it's just so yeah. He's out. You know, they're making dinner or whatever. He's out there still cutting down trees. Yeah, like how loud is he chopping wood though? Where it's like not. I just think he was like that far out. I think he was pretty far out. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was deep really into the forest. Deep down there. Yeah, and then he heard the woman scream, and that's when he comes back, and sure enough, everybody. Because by by the time he comes back, everyone's already dead. And Ian McShane's character is already kind of turned blue. I mean, he's so. like hanging, eyes bulging out, skin's like grayish blue. So yeah, he's it's been yeah, it a while. Like he's been hanging there for at least several minutes, not yeah. longer. Probably like a, maybe a half hour even. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. By the way, we're condensing this entire scene because this they keep coming back to this like three or four right. times I mean, they, the episode. In fact, the last scene is him picking up the axe. Like he's gonna go murder the sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. That, 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 yeah, Jason like, Voorhees has picked up his axe he's, he's to fine. find the campers. Yeah, the hound was enjoying <laughs> his hippie commune, and then shit went wrong, <laughs> and now he's going back to kill people. Shit got real. <laughs> now what the happens? hound's gonna do what the hound does and kill people. <laughs> go get your bow. Oh, too funny. Too funny. All right, so let's move on. Back in the north, um, John and Sansa and Davos are seeking. Allies uh, to retake Winterfell. Um, they uh, <clears throat> they secure the allegiance of they had the wildlings. Um, yeah, um, 
Because the way, the way, what he does is like he tells the wildlings that the Boltons are basically going to wipe out all the wildlings if the wildlings do nothing. And yeah, they pretty lose, much. So. Yeah. We know this wasn't part of our agreement, yeah. but if we don't deal with him, he's going to start to deal with you. Yeah, so. and, the, and even the wildlings are even kind of like, whoa, well, what is this our war, right? And then you got our giant, our giant giant who basically stands up like, snow. Yeah. <laughs> like, yep, 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 yep we vote with him. Vote with him. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, okay. Giant. <laughs> giant that, like, you know, it's a very like, practical take... rule of not pissing off the giant. Yeah. Well, I thought it was funny because even John's like, are you guys sure you're going to follow me? And they're like, we're not like you when we say we're going to do something. Right, yeah. yeah. We do it. <laughs> Which, Which I thought was funny. Yeah, we're actually, like, seeing, for, like, so many seasons, we've seen the wildlings painted in this, like, horrible, you know, kind of, like, native image and. Now we're actually seeing kind of like more of a respectful and side of them, which is kind of cool. Yep. So, and then they, they go on, and again, we're, we're kind of condensing this week, but they uh, we come up to house, I think it's more months? More months. More months. And they yes. come to, I think it's called it Bear Island, I believe, is yep. the name of their castle. And mm -hmm. uh, apparently the lady who now runs Bor uh, Mormont is, is eight. Is eight years old or maybe <laughs> younger. Mm -hmm. Was it eight? I thought she was like ten. I she was pretty young though. I mean, but yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah it was a curious at first, and then you're watching. Is like, oh shit, how is she like one of the best leaders on this show? Yeah. Well, even she reveals that you know her father died battling for yeah, her well, brother. I mean, for what Robert. is it? Her mm -hmm. green uncle used to be the uh, leader of the Night Watch. Yes. Her yeah. 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 Steph? I mean, with Jon Snow. Uh, and then you have Jorah. Jorah. He's also Dermont, and I think that's like her uncle. Mormont, yes, yeah. her uncle, yeah. Exactly. Well, and I think even at one point, which is another interesting thing to point out here, to give further evidence to our R plus L equals J, which uh, Sansa actually tells Lady Lyanna, um, didn't she say, like, she, you know, she knew, or my mother knew your mother, like the... Woman you're named, named mom, after you're named, my aunt. You're named after my aunt, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're like... Again, I mean, we're getting a little more of our Stark lineage here. Well, maybe just a slight tease of it, yeah. The, yeah. the show that they're all interconnected. Yeah, and then we've got Jon Snow standing right next to her while she's saying this, too. So, Right. But, so they're trying to make all these connections. They can't convince this young girl who acts very strong. And, and, I, love this, and I love this line she says to, right back to Sansa. She's like, she, she, lo she looks at Jon's like, you're a Snow. She looks at her and looks at Sansa and goes, and you're a Bolton. Or is it a Lannister? I can't tell which. Well, that's because Sansa says, well, I'm Stark. And she goes, well, I thought you were Bolton. Or is it or is Lannister? Or is it Lannister? Yeah. I was like, yeah. 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 yeah, so... So this little girl's, like, wise to the ways of a woman. Oh, yeah. And I it's weird so. because you see her take advice at times, and then other times when she's come to a decision, she's like, no, no I got this. I got it. Yeah. We're yeah. good. So wise beyond her years. Yeah, like, she actually is. does come across as one of the better rulers. I, like, she honestly. almost reminds me of, uh, like, Ned Stark back in season one. But that's yes. because she's only over 62 people or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier, I'm sure. Maybe 80. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's a small know, island And that's, that's the other thing, too, is maybe it's also a hint as to, like, what would happen if they let the women lead on the show, because we've had nothing but men we've seen lead, and everything's gone to shit. And this is like, isn't this, like, one of our first female leaders we've well, seen? I mean, so? you had, uh, next to Danny. ruling for a while. Well, yeah. I mean, next to Daenerys, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, you've... you've and we all know how much everyone loves oh. Daenerys. She was Cer Cersei, for a while. Cersei yeah. led for a little bit, very yeah. tiny bit. Yeah, it was a very small yeah. portion yeah. of time. But I mean, yeah. It's, it didn't really do anything to prove she was no. a better leader than any other than No, Lancer. she was mostly just there to get, like, revenge for her son's death while she yeah. was on the throne. That was it. Yeah. Well, I think you're going to see her rage in the next episode. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Later. <laughs> so anyway, so um, yeah, they secure like what sixty-two people from House yeah, Mormont. Yeah, like, well, we have sixty-two men. We need. Just sixty-two. Well, they're worth ten. Yeah, this is what the little girl. Yeah, they're each worth ten. Yeah, so yeah and because yeah, Davos says like see. if they're like well, because they, they, it almost made her feel bad. Like she goes, well, we're not as big as some of these other you know houses. Mm -hmm. We're a smaller house. This is what we've got. But each of them is worth ten men. Yeah, da so. uh, as Davos says, if they're anything like their lady, then one man is worth, worth at least ten. Yeah, mm -hmm. Davos did really well in this. Oh game. my god, this was yeah. Davos' like, scene. Davos is the one that secured those sixty-two. Oh yeah, well yeah, because <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, we're in the same boat, you and I. Right. Mm -hmm. He got down to her level. He's like, I, he's like, really. he, he talks about his lineage. He's like, and then all of a sudden, I became a knight. You know, and he's like, I, I know exactly where you're coming from, lady. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Um. 
So we also find out though that they're not able to secure every house in the north that they went and they're going after. We come up to House Glover, uh, maybe AKA Danny Glover. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Yeah. John um, Glover is the guy that played uh, Lionel Luther. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome if he was in the series. I love that guy. A connection to Smallville? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, wait. It's Clamp from Gremlins 2. <laughs> That's a big house to secure. So Glover kind of points out, you weren't here when the Ironborn took my my house. You know, Bolton helped me rescue him. Why should I help you? Mm. And there's a little bit of back and forth between Sansa well, and him. And, and, and a lot of people don't want to help Sansa or John because... Rob kind of nicely put it, um, kind of screwed him all over well, yeah. by marrying his goddamn medic. <laughs> well, she, yeah, he's, she's like, you know, he, he's got a, he basically, she, he told Sansa he got himself killed by <coughs> marrying some, some foreign. Yeah. Foreign, mm-hmm. Essentially, I believe this is his words. So, uh, yeah, so. so. So, yeah, Rob, Rob, it's not so much John and uh, Sansa that are having problems. You know, having people declare it as it is Rob. Well, yeah, his and then it's, it's the history, right? So it makes you kind of look back on Rob and go, you know what? Maybe he was kind of an idiot. Well, you know, I mean, but then, like, okay, you only have <laughs> you only have a couple hundred soldiers under their belt. Under what five thousand is what Bolton has. Yeah, yeah. and then they come up to. Um, Stannis's or what's left of Stannis's army, and they're like fighting amongst Which each other. I cannot wait. Oh my god, we are so because Davos to is gonna find out what happened to the little princess. Yep, I so can't wait I for that. I thought it was gonna be that episode because he's right there in the same camp that she was just burned. It's like, hey, anyway, god, what's this uh, smoldering, uh, you know, husk here? And Sansa goes back to it's her. Pile. Yeah, <laughs> San- Sansa. Oh god. Sansa goes back to the the whole hiding things again, yeah. you know, from yeah. her brother. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, so, she. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, like, so, like, what you're saying about her hiding things is because such a small number of people in there, you know, that they were able to gather by the end, they weren't able to gather enough people that could overtake the Boltons. Sansa, we the last thing we see in this story is that she begins writing a letter to be sent by Raven and puts like the. Uh, the stark, you know, symbol. the stark symbol on it. Mm. It never shows who she's sending it to. So I think there's maybe, actually like a yeah. fan that like uh, like it actually enhances decry- the image, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if it enhances, but it actually like decrypts the image. Well, yeah. <laughs> what they did was is they actually they freeze framed it on the letter, mm-hmm. then they reversed it and put it upside down so you can actually see what she's writing. Yeah. And they were able to make out in the cursive, seven, you know, almost the whole thing talking about. Um, you owe you owe me the whatever, um, you know. Come, use your forces for us, mm-hmm. and I, get, I I promise you that you will be repaid or you will be right. rewarded for your efforts. Right. Well, the other question too is we don't even know has, is she sending one out to Littlefinger? Oh yeah, it's definitely going to Littlefinger. It has yeah. to be because they they've only gathered at the end. We find out they've only gathered maybe. Thirteen, a few hundred men. Well, that, and I yeah. mean, the only yeah. other force you could send it off to would be Blackfish, but they've already sent Brienne off to you know try to secure that, which we know, now know is under siege. So yeah. <laughs> John doesn't know that yet, but yeah. which we'll get, to, uh, we'll, get to, uh, we'll get to we'll get to Mr. Blackfish here shortly. <laughs> so moving on, we're off to King's Landing, and we start off with the Pope, aka the High Sparrow, the poor Pope. Yes, poor Pope. <laughs> he didn't have that nice fancy hat. There, yeah, there's no Vatican. There's no. Uh, there's no bubble car. There's no sparrow mobile. No. There's no, no Pope mobile. There's no sparrow mobile. <laughs> there's no, no sparrow with cherry. Well, maybe he'll just have you know some people standing by him with a little. Glass Is it wrong that I want someone to kill him? Yeah. No, actually, it's not. I don't like him either. I mean, oh my I god. Him I, yeah, like I said, like it's, it's yeah, yeah. It's it, everything I loved about Ian McShane. I mean, is what makes this High Sparrow such a great villain, because he just does everything wrong about the faith. Like, he starts out, you're like, oh, hey, you seem like not so bad. I've got, oh, God, you got your eyes on the crown. You're doing horrible things. You're punishing people for sins that shouldn't really be punished, and now you've created a union of church and state, which well, yeah, we've mean, seen before in our history. This never works out. <laughs> well, I mean, this is actually pretty close to going back to, like, an Inquisition and then the yeah. convergence mm-hmm. of, you know, the Catholic Church with the empires. And 
The yeah, only, the it's only definitely referencing. Yeah, yeah the, the it's only borrowing from Headley. Yeah. yeah, the only thing that would be like any kind of like bright side of this would be if Mel Brooks does a little musical number out of it. <laughs> <laughs> That would the be hilarious. The High Sparrow. <laughs> what a <laughs> joke. <laughs> Watch out, Sid. I bet you wish. Oh, and you can like, have like musical numbers, just people getting their heads just chopped off. Well, and, and since it's Game off. of Thrones universe, I mean, Mel Brooks can probably go full nudity and like all of his dancers in the pools. <laughs> yeah. The nuns come out and completely disrobe. <laughs> but it's the walk of shame today. <laughs> all right. Um, the can there be bells? bells? <laughs> can there be bells? <laughs> <laughs> I started that. playing ping pong with my balls. <laughs> oh, the agony. Oh, the shame. <laughs> Make my private public for a game. Alright, come down. <laughs> <laughs> We're writing an entire musical number for Game of Thrones. This needs to continue. <laughs> uh, I actually took that straight out. Oh, yeah, we took that world. one straight out of the face. Oh, straight I know, but uh, like, it just needs to keep going. I mean, I see like Monty right. Python guys like smacking their heads well, with the yeah. Bibles walking by. <laughs> well, I mean, essentially, you go to the Iron thing. Islands and you have the Monty Python skit. You go to this, you know. The Lannisters and the Inquisition, you have Mel Brooks, it'll be a nice little merger. I'm just dying to make like a Monty Python in the Game of Thrones or something. <laughs> Actually, if anybody could do it, it'd be Mel. Mel can do maybe yeah. like that. Just or, do like a whole bunch. Like, or John so, Cleese. So yeah. Mel, Mel, take, Mel, Mel takes King's Mel Landing. Mel Books. Mel Books takes, you know, takes King's Landing. Yeah. yeah. And then you got Monty Python takes another another city. The so, Wall. So, so if you get Mel know, Brooks and John Fraggle, Cleese. Fraggle Rock takes the Wildlings. <laughs> <laughs> Fraggle Rock. So if we got like Mel Brooks I'll and John I'll, Cleese. I'll be on the wall. <laughs> I'll be on the wall. <laughs> So nice. instead of giants, we have Sprocket over there? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Steph is so lost. Hold it. Let's bring it back. All right. Um, the High Sparrow starts off with the High Sparrow and Queen Marjorie. And did anybody think that this whole scene with Marjorie and the Sparrow was just a little too personal? That's like, it. I think it's exactly... It's, it's, put his hand on her leg. Well, it's, it's exactly what the High Sparrow... You, you can see his game now. It's like when you can tell it's, whether someone's been bluffing or playing their cards. I mean, he's really showing what he wants. Oh, yeah, because he's like, my dear, it's your duty to produce an heir. You haven't been laying in the bed with the king, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. And I think, and again, Marjorie being... Marjorie is definitely playing him because she's been able to get all of his... She's playing everybody. Yeah, she's playing everybody. Oh, yeah, she is. You know? We find that out... She's been able to get Later. the High Sparrow to finally reveal everything that he's wanted. And she... <laughs> Marjorie's endgame is going to be beautiful on this. And I'm not worried about Cersei's. I'm not worried about her grandmother's. It's going to be Marjorie's endgame of this. Marjorie's going to get everything she wants. Cersei's yeah. going to be dead, more than likely. No, no. Cersei's going to live. It's going to be her son that dies, according to the witch prophecy. Yeah, that's well, what I was going to say. She's going to outlive her kids. Well, yeah, what's what's going to happen is she's going to become pregnant. Yeah. And then she's going to kill him. Yeah. Tommen. Tommen. Yep. Yeah. Or something's gonna happen. Yeah, because she what, what, she'll use the spare because she gave that note something. to her, her mom, which is well, grandmother. 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 In the next yeah. scene, yeah, we have Marjorie meets with the Queen of Thorns, and it's like you need to return home. Actually, the sparrow before that go back is actually threatens Marjorie and says, mm-hmm. "I don't know what's going to happen to the Queen of Thorns if she like, stays." So unless, she, unless you unless you convert her to the faith, <laughs> right? So he's basically threatening her directly. Mm-hmm. She, in turn, then meets with her grandmother, who is insistent, I'm never going to leave you. Are you crazy? And then she gives her something, which turns like, out... Very, like, very skillfully, like... I mean, cause she's got she this meets, nun over yeah, Marjorie's shoulder. The whole time. Yeah. And Marjorie finds a way to put her hand in her grandmother's. And, s- and you hear, like, the little crinkle of, like, slipping the paper, and you're like... Because eh, eh, eh. that's what I said. We're getting these little bits that Marjorie is not gone. Well, well, it's funny, even after she convinces, her, after she gives a piece of paper and the Queen of Thorns plays along with, all right, I'll return home, she leaves. She turns to the nun and goes, shall we pray? I thought it was a Shall we go pray? <laughs> yeah, it was just perfect. Um, well, the entire scene where she was, like, talking with her grandmother was really well done, and you just, I love, like, that character where just that wit and kind of, well, F you, you know, kind of personality, and it, it just works so well. Emma Peel's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and anyway, we were, as we also find out that the little piece of paper is actually a rope, so it's a yep. hand. It's the house rope. sigil, the house yeah. to rail. rail so. It's a 
quick little things like I'm not that shit crazy. Yeah. I'm, no. I'm not a again. sparrow. I'm, <laughs> still I'm good. Yeah. yeah, I'm still. I'm still, I'm still me. loyal. To <coughs> yeah. yeah. Still yep. So, um, next scene. Our uh, next part in this whole thing we want to cover is Cersei. Then goes to the Queen of Thorns when she finds out. Well, you're, you're leaving. Mm. You can't leave. We need to fight them together. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, the Queen of Thorns slams Cersei pretty hard. Oh, does she ever? I mean, she just kind of just lets her have it and says, well, you've lost. You it's have like, nothing left. Blah, it's like, blah, blah. You, you had that smirk on your face when they drug my son and daughter away. Grandson. Yeah. Granddaughter. Whatever. Yeah. She's the fact checker. It's okay. Yeah. That's a, she's step boy. It's okay. Love you, step. But yeah, like uh, Oleana, like she looks at Cersei's, like you brought the sparrows here, so you lost. <laughs> you did this, so I don't care what they do to you. Right. It's just such a beautiful moment that well, Oleana. It, not only does she tell her off, but she's stoking her fire too. As mm-hmm. far as I'm concerned, she's mm-hmm. pushing her over oh, yeah. the edge. She yeah, because great line where it's just like my <laughs> one joy out of this is that knowing that you've got totally fucked over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly, essentially, yeah. Yes, so because I'm waiting for her to go look at the mountain and say, you know, do her little head nod and have her kill Orlando. Mm-hmm. Just unleashing the beast yeah. upon the city. Yeah, because yeah. well, she yeah. keeps threatening that you know there's going to be a trial by combat, and I will use. Yeah, the no, I have the mountain. There's a lot of lead up to this. It almost makes you think that. Well, is he really going to come out ahead? Or what? I don't know. If he loses his head, does he keep moving? <laughs> anyway, I don't know. But yeah, she, so she totally, not only does she slam her, but I think she really stokes her fire, which is what I think is going to mm-hmm. lead into the next episode. Oh yeah, she pushed the button. Mm-hmm. If Cer- is Cersei going crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we, we got like the trailers already, and yeah. it's just, oh, yeah, they're like, we don't want there to be violence, and yeah, you know, she's got the mountain behind him, and she just goes, I choose violence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, and uh, we'll get to theories at the end, I've got a good theory, but anyway. All right, go on. So, moving <coughs> on, we move on to Volantis. And in Volantis, the the stolen Ironborn fleet has arrived <laughs> to drink and hoard themselves to death one more time before sailing south to meet Khaleesi. To yeah. Yeah, right. Actually, it's a good plan, like, pretty much saying, <coughs> we're going to cut off the uncle before he gets there, mm-hmm. just right. so we can prepare a counterattack. It's yeah. a great plan, actually. So, and Yara's like, it's, yeah. The scene is great, because... The entire crew is whoring it up, drinking and whoring it up. <laughs> even his, even Theon's sister is sitting there. Yara's got the most the, supple prostitute there yeah, on her like, lap. Yeah, she's leading her men by example. Oh on yeah, this girl's tits right in front of Theon. And Theon's just sitting there going, "Well, oh, okay. yeah, you see him just like I, I, PTSD, I, traumatic. I, yeah, I, I, I like yours. I like yours statement about her, her quote unquote whore. She goes. You can't get in. You can't get tits like that over in the Iron Islands. <laughs> I was like, oh well, even, even her her parting line to Theon, which we'll yeah. be, I'll go ahead and say it is, well, I'm gonna fuck the tits off that. Yeah. One. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go, okay. Yeah. If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go fuck the tits <laughs> off that. One. Yeah. Yeah. Drink your ale or slit your wrist. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Was oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Do. Tell Theon. All right. Well, if you're you're either gonna come back and be Theon. Or and you know just what? Just end it now. Like like any you know like like a great build up does. She, she like the, every time she does it, drink the ale. He takes a drink and she keeps building him up. It's like you are Theon Greyjoy. Do you mm-hmm. remember what you did? Mm-hmm. Drink the ale and she, she keeps building him. It's like yeah. you are not the person that was in that prison when I went to get you. Take drink a drink. The ale. Yeah. <laughs> She's like finish your drink. Which yeah. a great scene. So it yeah, just, it, it like, keeps Ooh. building up in tension and just. It's just so great, and there's this just sense of just like you're going to be useful to me, or you can go fuck off. Right, die. and then like yeah, I mean it's like it's the Theon that we've been wanting to see, him, <laughs> like the Theon before he betrayed the Starks. So, but it took took his at least bisexual sister to bring out bring his balls back to him, which is just hilarious. <laughs> well, in a lot of a lot of instances well, in the show, we've seen that the women have bigger balls than the men. As much as they like to brag, it's the women that have the balls. And no offense. She's the only sister of what four brothers, and it's an iron island, so it's like mostly a male attitude kind of an island. Yeah, she's been the leader of raiding parties. There's for years. yeah, she's been sailing for years. Oh, yeah, she's they been drowned their king before their ceremony. I mean, she she. I mean, how is she not supposed to be a bisexual? Well, true. Uh, or, or, or 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 gay. Yeah. I mean. 
Yeah, she might even that might even just be her way. Like it's like, oh, my bros think they can you know fuck a whore. I can fuck her better than them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and on that line, let's move on to Bravos. Um, so poor Arya. Uh, um, Arya. My wife's favorite scene here. Like, yeah, we know uh, it's coming. Arya just, basically yeah. goes to uh, you know to two guys. Says you're from Westeros. Your face. You look like Westeros. And I, I want to book a passage home. Throws a big bag, smaller bag of money at him, and he goes, "Okay, well, you can have like a cot or not a cot, but a." Uh, it's like, oh, you, you can, can have, have a, a steerage. Hammock, yeah. or steerage or whatever. <laughs> you can have a hammock in storage. Right, and then she throws a bigger bag, a big old thing of gold out, and says, now I'll have a cabin, and we're leaving tomorrow. Not in two days, like he originally said. <laughs> Where did you get that money? Does it matter? Right. Do you care? Nope. Didn't yeah. think so. And yeah, then he's like, what makes you think we're leaving tomorrow? Yeah. Throw another bag. Right. <laughs> Which, and true to form, as a good writer will say, we don't need a whole fucking backstory where she got the gold. We know what the story is. Just right. Drop the bag. Doesn't matter. Let's move. You know, she's been trained as an assassin. I'm sure she yeah. has steel gold. Still, yeah. it's probably part of that training to a certain extent. Yeah. So she, she grabs it, and then she grabs it back from him right as she's leaving. The bigger bag of gold. Just both of them. Yeah. Oh, was it both? I thought both it was bags. just Swipe both bags back. So, mm-hmm. you know, making her intentions known, showing she's a badass, and blah, 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 kind of sort of throwing her weight around a little bit. And I have a theory about all that, too, but... Okay, well, what's your theory? We, are we talking theories now? Oh, yeah. we can wait. It, it's okay. Well, we can talk about it now. Well, what's right. your theory right now on Arya? Because I don't think that was actually her. Uh, I think that was actually the man with no name. Oh. Because her hair looked different than it normally does. She walked with a different swagger than she has been for the past so many episodes. So you think he took her place? Yeah. So what's the but, advantage of him taking her place? Because I think that his his true test was actually not for it. It was actually for the other girl. For Waif. For Waif. Because he said, don't let her suffer. Yes. He said, don't let her suffer. And because if you're, if you're, uh, if you're a riot, if you're a riot trying to escape or whatever, you're not out in public. Mm. You're not making yourself known. You're certainly not right out there in the open, just kind of like watching the sunset Watching the water. Watching the water, and the when when wave comes up, disguises the old woman. Yeah. Oh right, that was the mask we saw in the other episode, in in the in the all the all the masks. That mm-hmm. was the old woman's mask that we saw there. So she, you know, she had to have known that's who that was. Mm-hmm. And then it just happens, and then she's more. She's not upset that she actually got stabbed. She's upset with who it is, and then all of a sudden she fights back. Yeah. And not even not even pulls out needle, like actually just pushes it. And and that's the other thing. She didn't pull out needle, which I thought you, you would have thought she would have pulled out needle and done that. So I think she's actually playing them, and that's actually pig's blood. <clears throat> and she fell into the water and acting as she's going to be. But she's going through the street with the blood no, and stuff. Right. She's playing them, going to draw them out because they know she's wounded. Yeah. If, if that was her. Okay. Right? To give Arya the chance to kill him. Right. The real Arya. Yes. I see. That's that's a possibility because she she we we saw her go get needle, yeah, mm-hmm. and pretty much just like, you know, and then all of a sudden now she's oh I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight back or nothing I'm just gonna oh it hurts me and then fall into the water yeah How is and, he and not only that water? but you know Arya is someone who doesn't matter if she's in steerage, you know as we've seen she doesn't look for any kind of luxury or anything. Mm, true. Yeah. Well, yeah, but she has been living a life. Devoid of it for quite a while. But yeah, how, how would the? I mean, I know they can make themselves any body, but how would the man with no name make himself that? Essentially, small? if they're just like shrinking down, just the face is part like, of the, the magic. Or and, yeah, I, like I said, I, I just it's just a theory because mm. she didn't walk the same way. Mm. She didn't present herself the same way that she normally has. Yeah. So it was just kind of it was seemed <clears> off <throat> to me. Okay. So there there was that aspect of it, and then there was the other aspect of it where it was like. She didn't pull out needle. Mm. Yeah. You know, and it was more of a surprise that she got stabbed a couple times in the, as opposed to the girl could have slit her throat mm-hmm. and made her not suffer. Yeah. yeah. Or walked up behind her, yeah. Right. Which, so but, he disobeyed the, right, the man. It, and exactly. No so maybe it was well. a test. So, and then the reason I say it's Steph's favorite scene because she got angry after this episode just for how they treated Arya in that whole scene. Because if that really was Arya, I mean... You were pissed. Oh, I was mad because here they are making, you know, having her get needle and, you know, 
she she's hiding out in this cave like thing and she blows out the thing she's got a needle next to her okay and then she goes into the city the next day and you're like what the hell yeah exactly and i'm like bleeding. um she walked yeah. like a and then and then this old woman on the bridge go excuse me i'm like okay i'm sorry if you know your life's in danger and you know you fucked up and you know you didn't do the job you were supposed to do and somebody comes up behind you and you're all alone and somebody goes, excuse me, you're just going to turn around? Mm. Yep, exactly. And not be armed? No. Very sorry, no. Okay, so... I'm sorry, I'm a city girl. No, you no, you no, just... No. You don't do that. So, alright, let's just assume for a second that it is Arya. Let's go around real quick. If Arya dies, we continue to watch stuff. Yes... Yes, Johnny? Begrudgingly, because it's Arya, Tyrion, and Daenerys that are essentially like my three linchpins since season one. Okay. Eric? Yeah, I would. You would? Brian? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Everybody dies. I would too. It's just. Val- Val- it's, Val- it's, it's definitely, for me, it's hard because she's like the Jedi to me. It's like, that's the one I'm rooting for. It's the character you've yeah. really been building. But what's going to be your final like, yes. you're, you're rooting for Daredevil? No, I'm rooting for Anakin Skywalker <laughs> as a female. It's like, ah. Okay, <laughs> so let's move on to the Riverland. <coughs> Jamie and Braun um, lead the Lannister. Braun is back! Yeah! Okay. Braun is back for now. He seems a little bit more disgruntled, though. He's he pissed. He wants best. to enjoy his retirement. Yeah. How many times are they dragging this poor guy out of his castle and his riches? It's well, a, yeah, he's, he's pissed. Like, well, he's like, I haven't been promised everything you promised me. I haven't been given. I was promised yeah. a lordship. I was promised a wife. I was, I was promised a, a gorgeous kid. wife. Yes. Yeah. And I haven't gotten it. I had to go to fucking Dorne, man. You've been to Dorne? Everything sucks there. The show falls down. And, and, and Jamie, in true Dorn. fashion of a Lannister, goes, A Lannister always, and Bronn stops and goes, <laughs> No, don't say it. No. <laughs> yeah. and, and Jamie's like, but okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Not buying I've it. Heard this that time. Shit enough. I'll take your hand. Oh, he heard it from Tyrion all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so <coughs> So they're on their way. They run into I I think it's listed Lothar Frey. Lothar Frey and Walder Rivers. Yeah. Of, so, of, Basically, of of Walter Frey's two guys, yeah. two idiots. Yeah. Um, they're essentially they're like, <laughs> all right, you're gonna come out, or we're gonna kill him. Uh, okay, well, all we're, right. we're gonna hang oh, him. We're, we're gonna, gonna hang, hang him. We're gonna do it. Um, I was like, oh, I'm gonna cut his throat. Oh, we're gonna so hang him. He's like, do it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He walks up. He goes. Kill him. We see. Yeah, our first time seeing Blackfish on those gates, he just looks at us like. Then do it already. And Ed Mirror's going. You're taking your sweet ass <laughs> time about this. So they come, <laughs> they come walking up like, oh, what are we gonna do now? And then and they Jamie put Abbott and Costello in charge of an execution. <laughs> Pretty much. And, and Jamie, they run into Jamie. <laughs> 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 Jamie just kind of puts them in their place. Essentially, it's like, I'm here for the king. I'm here for the king. You're, you will follow me, blah, 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 or else. Yeah. yeah or Jamie, else you'll join them. You'll join them. In <laughs> yeah, there's a great meme of like one of that scene where he gets smacked. It's like talk shit, get hit. Like on a meme, just from where like yeah, he yeah. smacks him. It's like oh, that works so well. Yeah, he's like yeah, I was, I was, I was, I did like that scene. That was pretty funny. He's like when you say something, you don't follow through. Like talk shit again, and I'll blah blah blah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> so uh, this has been a very between the uh, between the wildlings and this. This has been a very truthful episode. It seems like. Yeah. <laughs> People following up with what they say they're going to do. Yeah. So, um, the Blackfish, though, we have the Blackfish. Jamie calls for parlay. <laughs> A little flashback to uh, our uh, Pirates of the Caribbean Pirates days. Of the Caribbean. Par- parlay. Um, so, Afraid I am disinquisition so to acquiesce your request. <laughs> yes. Means so, no. No. <laughs> Means no. But, uh, so Jamie, they lower the drawbridge. Out Blackfish. So it's Blackfish versus Jamie on the drawbridge, essentially. And, it's, it's, and again, I thought that was one of the better speeches of the It was evening. one of the greatest scenes of the show. I mean, it's just the whole... It just proves that you don't need to go on the, the bridge and have a giant, you know, choreographed battle or whatever. The, the show's battles are in its words, in its exchanges. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just it's a constant back and forth between him and Blackfish. Yeah. And at the end, when Jamie realizes that he's not going to give up, Jamie's like, well, why did you call me out here then? He's like, I wanted to see what kind of man you are. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to measure you measure up. Yeah, but before that, Blackfish says one of the coolest things ever. And he goes, you know, I was born here. I'm ready to die here. And if you want to see where it goes... Cool. And um, Jamie looks at him and goes, The war is over, old man. He goes, As long as I'm still alive, the war is not over. Yeah. I was like, Oh. <coughs> well, he's, he's, he's the old, he's begrudging, but he's still got, he can still kill somebody. But we, yeah, we well, talked about this, yeah, there, me did. and you. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's the younger generation versus the older generation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and him. Him and Walter Frey, are I think, the, I think are the only two left over from the older generation. We might be missing somebody. We, we yeah. still have a few Am old I? people. Like we, I, mean, I feel like this is a thing that we've covered before about like some of the older. Or oh wait, um, the last guy that got Orlando. executed Sorry. at uh, Castle Black that was trying to hold on to the old ways of Castle Black. Oh, uh, you're talking about the uh, the guy who was uh, the one that Jon Snow Thorn Thorn yeah. yeah Thorn holding on to the old ways and of course. What happens to him? Yeah, he gets cut down. Yeah. But, I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, so they had that little confrontation, and then Blackfish said, well, I'm, I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, 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 Jamie's like, yeah, he's like, I'm what, sorry, what, I'm measuring you yeah, up, why did, you know, why did yeah, you even d- a, agree to do yes. this? Yeah. So. And bear in mind, this is the castle that Brienne of Tarth is going to, mm. to recruit some allies from Blackfish. But we also find out before Blackfish leaves that... They have two years worth of provisions. It's like, oh yeah, we have two years worth of provisions. You know, and do and do you have two years? Well, Which, if, yeah. if he's if he's smart, if he's smart, then he will hold out. And once he finds out from Brienne that you know to give uh, his family time to take back the north with Littlefinger's help, unfortunately, but you know they would should be able to sack Winterfell, and after that point, you know it's they'll have the full backing of Winterfell, and then. Against the Lannisters, who are yeah. going to be also fighting Dorne at some point. Oh God! Enough with Dorne. I don't think they're going to be fighting him this season. No more Dorne. Mm-hmm. Oh, they should have the uh, one sisters in like they got the, the castle, right? Yeah, they're running. The yeah, show. they're running Dorne. Yeah. We'll just keep the, the snakes in their pit and like leave the pit over there because it's a it gets to be kind of a downfall. Of the sh- I mean, that's that's the big meme right now is like the only downfall of the show is whenever anyone goes to Dorne. Didn't they take out Dorne in X Men? <laughs> uh, Dorn are supposed to be some badass fighters. So they are, be, and be Dornish easy. women are beautiful. Yeah, and deadly. Apparently. And deadly, yes, Very that we've deadly. seen. So. Braun almost uh, lost his life to them. Exactly. But uh, oh, and another interesting point is with Brienne going there. Uh, Jamie's already there, mm-hmm. and who else is with Brienne? But our favorite uh, Ginger Wildling, <laughs> who's got his eye on her. So we're gonna have a nice little love triangle yes, there. The love triangle. <laughs> Which, <laughs> speaking of which. <laughs> Speaking of the ginger wildly, did you guys see the commercial on TV? Which one? It's a it's a for um. Oh yeah, I have it's, seen it's, that it's one. A, it's a travel commercial. Oh yeah, yeah. I she, it, 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 she showed it to me. It's like I'm not used no, to I seeing haven't. him in a suit. Yeah, and, and, he's, he's, like, and he's, he's talking about all the different ways you can have the travel and everything, and he's and he's like it's like as a weatherman on TV. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but it's the, it's him, and he's talking in the same voice. It's freaking hilarious. And he's yeah. got like a suit on. Yeah. He's like well groomed. Yeah. I'm like. Wow, I'm not used to seeing the side of him. <laughs> huh. it's, it's pretty good. Oh, look it up. It's, it's good. It oh, there's another one, too, that actually has uh, the mountain. Speaking of awesome commercials from Game of Thrones actors, the guy that plays the mountain is in this commercial called Heavy Bubbles, which is quite possibly one of my favorite commercials. Okay. Heavy, Bubbles. Heavy Bubbles. It's about... It's like, it's like, Yo, how is it you get so big? Go away. You want to know how I get big? I drink this water called Heavy Bubbles. <laughs> and he's like walking through plate glass windows <laughs> on his way out of buying these gi- giant, like, like yeah. dumbbell size, you know, gallons of water. <laughs> All right. So before we get to final thoughts, <laughs> you gotta watch that. It's awesome. I'm gonna get. Let's. let's I, I've got one theory I'm gonna throw out there. And if anybody else has any theories, we can throw it out to them too. Uh, the fact that the Hound has returned. The fact that the Hound was saved by a seven star sept leads me to believe that you could have a trial by combat 
with the mountain versus the hound. <laughs> the hound would fight for this high sparrow, and the mountain would fight for Cersei. I don't know if the hound would follow the high sparrow. Well, it was it was a sept that saved him. It was back. the Sept, but it was also uh, Ray's fight. words, too. And he, he'll be able to hear. manipulative. He, if anybody manipulative, yeah. But talk, anybody it, it might be an interesting scene, but I just I don't know if we'll see it coming. Like, I was actually kind of thinking they were going to go with the Hound and Arya again sort of thing. Like, yeah. a reunion and them trying to go off kill people. <laughs> but, sure. yeah, it's possible. Though. That's what I'm thinking. One, one of my favorite memes I saw was, like, right after Joffrey was killed. and Because by that time, like, Arya and the Hound were, like, so far away. They just simply had a picture of like Arya and the Hound on the horse. Like they like put like the uh, deal with it shades over them. It's like <laughs> nice. meanwhile Arya and the Hound be like fuck the king. <laughs> there's that, or there's also been ones that have done like the Calvin and Hobbes style illustrations with them. Yeah. So here's my question. Yep. So if you have the Hound mm-hmm. versus the Mountain, the Hound is scared of his brother because his brother's the one that set him on fire. Right. So now that the Mountain's a zombie. Would he be afraid of fire, too? Exactly. Well, wouldn't it be just desserts if he set the, the mountain on fire? Because this is also part of my theory. And Cersei loses. So the Frankenstein monster dead. is afraid of fire as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, or that's how the hound kills kills the mountain. At the oh, okay. End. Right. It'd be funny, yeah. It'd be just desserts, and Cersei would die because of it. It'd be trial by... Yeah. <coughs> Maybe. So... Just a little theory. Cool. I well, Tommen's got to die before she does. So. Yeah, but I'm that's just saying. It's, it's, it's and if, and if that happens, Jamie has absolutely nothing. No. He's on his own. 100%. So, what do you guys... Okay, so... Any other theories out there? Anybody has right now? Uh, we um, have Brian's. One of Brian's. Yeah, well, you had the one that I had for the... the yeah, Ari, Ari, which is very interesting. But I think the other thing is, I think um, they hinted at it, and I think we're going to see the return of... Um, what call it? Because they, they already said Catelyn. Yeah. They said she's coming. That's she's yeah, coming. That was actually my Lady next theory too. Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, Lady Stoneheart. Or something yeah, Lady like Stoneheart. Lady, yeah, Lady Blackheart. Something like that. Stoneheart. 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 Yeah. Uh, well, because and that's what I was going to say is like because we've introduced the Brotherhood without banners. The person who rides with the Brotherhood without banners is Lady Stoneheart. Yeah, so, so she's given yeah. what like an ever like this is from the books, so I've heard she's given like the. Kiss of Life or something, or something she can't die, book. Yeah. right? So, well, I think she just brought back. I don't know if she can't die. I, I, I thought, she, I thought it was she couldn't like. Well, she like immortality or something. I thought she was like borderline, almost like a ghoul or ghost yes. or something, like where she was like uh, a vengeful spirit. That is, yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a wraith, basically. Mm-hmm. But the way I think, way I, the way they've kind of tied it in is, um, they talked about her mother. Um, They've been talking about her a lot. They yeah. talked about talked about her mother being like thrown into the river, but they didn't say anything about her dying. So oh, she, God. so she was tossed into the river to do whatever you know to like show whatever show. I can't remember what what how they yeah, phrased it. Yeah, it was last episode. Frey even brought her up. Brought up, yeah, brought her name. Up. Frey brought her up, and so did um, what's her name? Who was Snow? What's her name? Oh, Sansa. Uh, Sansa. 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 Yeah. Brought her up too. Yeah, and. I just I just think that they're going to bring her in. That would be cool. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe part of that long that long mm-hmm. episode we promised. I like the idea yeah. of, of a Caitlyn Wraith. That would be pretty freaking sweet. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. just out to kill one person or you know. Anyone yeah, but does it her an entire house? Yeah. Basically, yeah. A, basically a venture venture house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah, doesn't awesome. doesn't Caitlyn also not like John? No, she hates John. Yeah, that's what I well, thought. She, well, she doesn't have she was different either. to him in life, but she's she. I think kind of mm. indifferent mostly. Like I don't think like her venge her vengeance would stretch out to John if anything. Okay, because John wasn't responsible for the tearing apart of her house and everything. Okay. Okay. So one more quick question here. Well, we've kind of turned into a question thing. What uh, do we think we see the White Walker invasion? This the end of the season. I would hope so. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Like it's just always closer. <coughs> always closer. There are rumors. Always closer. There are rumors that the wall itself falls. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that's true? It would kind of have to be to a mm-hmm. certain extent, or at least part mm-hmm. of it. Um, so it's a half a wall. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, if you look at like the Great Wall of China, like there's parts of it where it just got destroyed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why is it every time Chinese build a wall, Mongolia got turned down? <laughs> you ever play the Stick of Truth? It's amazing. I love that <laughs> entire episode. I will not work. They will go around the wall. All right. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's get into final thoughts and grade. Since your voice is going out, I'll let you have the, the honor of the first final thought, Greg. I'll say A. Hey. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that after you. Uh... Yeah. I, I, I love the show. I'll always watch the show. It doesn't matter who dies or whatever. You keep coming back for more because HBO has everybody by the hook. Oh, yeah. And, and no, one, no one who's watched it from season one is going to leave at this point. Right. Because they've been building up and building up to all these different things. And I just, you know, it'll be it'll be fun to see the the um, can I can I do a spoiler the the battle of the bastards and that'll be fun to watch. Episode nine has been um, called battle of the bastards. So that'll be really that'll be really cool to watch. Yeah. So um, I'm looking forward to that one. Let's get ready to the legitimize. All right, uh, <laughs> Johnny. Um. A minus A, um, definitely. It's 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 one of those episodes that you can tell is setting up groundwork for bigger things to follow. And every time the show does it, it doesn't feel like filler. And that's the great thing about the show is you know that you have like your big events in every episode, and nothing is ever filler. Yeah. Like it's you get great dialogue, you get great scenes, you have character progression every single time. You have something new that's always happening. And again, it's 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 not. It never once feels like it's filler. So, I mean, there may have, it may have felt like you know when you're doing your your best of or your greatest hits album or whatever, and you're like taking it down a notch just so you can like get up to your like apex or whatever. It feels like that, but it doesn't take anything away from this episode. It's, yeah, that's all. <laughs> cool. All right, um, I'll give it actually give it a B plus, um, only because it. It was a lot of setup. It was a lot of dialogue, and I enjoyed that. Had a little bit of violence with Arya getting stabbed, but I hated that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I thought Steph was going to grade a lot lower than she did. I, just, I, I didn't say A plus. I just said A. Yeah, I I, I just give it a B plus for for probably for lack of action a little bit, but lack of violence. That's what I come to watch. Uh, Game of Thrones score. Although we did get to see some tits, so that was good. Yeah. Some very uh, animal ones too. Yes, yeah, very. Um, so, uh, yeah, just overall B+. Plus. But a good episode, like I said, a lot, of, a lot of setup, a lot of, I think the next two, ep- last two episodes, we'll, uh, where are we at? So we got I think we're left. three episodes out. Three, so we got three. So, yeah, I think the next three will probably be pretty action-packed, I would think. Because we've got Game a lot of Thrones to usually does really well for the finales. Yeah, so uh, I think we might see, like, the last well, like, two episodes will be the big battles. Well, our episode, like, in true fashion, I think, like, episode nine is going to be the big battle, and then... You like kind of 10, set up for the next season. 10 is going to be like their setup for the next season, which is probably why it's going to be 69 minutes long. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The last, that's yeah, the last episode really is going to be... How much over that is normal, like an extra 11, 12 minutes? Um, it's an extra nine. Nine? Yeah, I mean, like, because they're given a 60-minute block, mm. and everything else that follows after that is, like, previews for other HBO shows, because there's never any commercials in between. Mm. But they're given, like, an extra nine minutes to go over, mm. and... That just shows how much they've got to... It just shows how much they're going to be set... Or how much they're tying up and how much they're going to continue to set up. And knowing that next season's going to be its last season, yeah, it's... <laughs> well, we It's going to be glorious. We don't know if it'll be one. Yeah. All right, Brian. Um, I'll, give it, I'll give it a B+. Plus. Um, even though this was a setup episode, um, I liked it better than the, the premiere. The premiere to me felt like, even though it was a setup episode, it felt like filler. Because okay. like, we didn't really, I mean, everything was getting set up, so there wasn't really a whole bunch of action, and there wasn't really, a, it was just basically previously seen on Game of Thrones, what it felt like to me. Like, here's what, we're just going to give you little bits of everything, mm-hmm. and then, okay, we're done. It's like, really? 
this episode felt more like, like John said, more of a progression of everything. Um, maybe not so much as a straight path as one of those winding roads that go <laughs> up the mountain. You know, so right. we're hitting our little plateaus on each one, but we're still continuing to go up the mountain. So or figure I, out ways around the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, I, I like this episode. I thought it was pretty good. Like you said, it was the uh, you know, the horse scenes. Was it was, it was yeah, yeah. That, that was top notch. And, then, <laughs> and it, even 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 the Arya scene where she, or, you know where she got stabbed. Mm -hmm. That that whole setup because I don't like I don't like the other the other character. What's her name? Wafy. Wafy. Yeah, I don't really like her that much. Well, she's, she's a good little, she's a good little snot. Yeah. Right, exactly. But So you can just tell that maybe she's being tested. And, you know, I like, like my whole theory there. So theory. I'm, I'm excited to see what goes on. Okay. Aaron, five fucker. Uh, I'd give this episode an A. Even though it is kind of a build-up episode, it doesn't really have that much in terms of being like slow moments or anything that really just drags the episode down. Like, you have the introduction of Lady Mormont, who is probably one of my favorite characters I've She's seen hilarious. introduced this season. Yeah. Like, it, I enjoy her almost as much as, like, Brienne of Tarf, and it's, it's a great new character to introduce. You have that great scene with Theon and his sister in the horror house, and it's just, it has that dramatic tension to it, and just, even though the episode wasn't have a lot of battles or fighting, it didn't really drop down in terms of being a slow episode. So his name remains. Okay. Cool. I think I had a question. Was that whorehouse the same whorehouse that Tyrion was in? Ooh, that's a good uh, question. On his way. You know, oh yeah, from last season. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that's a good possibility. I mean, yeah, let's, let's look this. I, I gotta look this one I mean, up it, now. It, it looks very similar to that. I one. need it's to know possible. these whorehouses. It, it would be uh, in that direction. Yeah. I mean, so. they've already established when uh, Tyrion was going there that there's kind of a small <laughs> pathway to kind of get there safely. Uh huh. So yeah, actually, there's a probably a good likelihood of it. Yeah, it's possible. While John looks that up, I'll just go over where can you find Foreign Midwest Guys. Well, you can find Foreign Midwest Guys very simply by going to Google, typing in the number four Midwest Guys. Uh, there you'll find our Facebook page. We have a Twitter account. We have a YouTube page where we also post our podcast. And eventually we'll do video as well down the pike. Mm -hmm. We're making some progress towards that. Um, Hopefully in the fall we'll start maybe do some trailer review shows and stuff like that. Maybe even in the summer might do some testing. Um, but everything you can find, our email address is there. Everything you can reach out to us. But please reach out to us. We want to hear back from you. Um, our Twitter accounts, uh, I know it's our first, the four Midwest guys is now over 1,200. Uh, you're what, Brian? 20, 2,300 or something like that. So uh, we definitely got a lot of followers. Please keep that up. We want new followers also, but reach out to us. Uh, you, we did a whole theories segment tonight. We would love to do a theory segment with your theories. Talk about your theories, your questions, your comments. The Game of Thrones is full of questions and theories. Reach out to us. <coughs> get back in touch with us. Let us know what you think of the show. What, how do you think we're doing? So, all right, John. What's the verdict? Yes. Volantis is where Jorah kidnapped Tyrion from season five. Yeah. There you go. They are noted Coffee. for their whores nice and their blood. rivers. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's not a bad thing to be. Volantis is the red light district of uh. <laughs> the whole seaside. There you go. So we know which country we want to, to survive. Volantis, <laughs> <laughs> well, everything else can go, but no. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, Brian, thanks for joining us, sir. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. Aaron? Yep, no problem. Easy. Thank you again. Stephanie? Thanks. And for myself, E. Willie saying, don't like anybody on the show or they'll die. They'll except die for, anyway. Except for Ramsey. Love Ramsey to death. But I mean, if you really like him, maybe they'll come back. <laughs> like Jon Snow. That's true. And Catelyn. And apparently the Hound. Yeah. And maybe that. Arya. Uh, well, they didn't show her die yet, so. Okay. We gotta stop it.